when I came off of paternity leave, my video game case was with us in Pittsburgh, and the first thing I did was make him a character in Road to the Show, naturally. So this is Bo Phillips, my Road to the Show MLB player. He's a two-way player, but he's pitching a lot better than he's hitting right now, which, like father, like son. And I was just finishing up playing MLB The Show on the PS5. Oh my gosh. He's just a left-handed hitter and a right-handed pitcher. He's a two-way player. He's literally a baby. No, I know. But you know, like anytime I play like a video game, I always I used to make you the character. Well, I'm just second to both. Like I'm pretty now, sure last year in MLB The Show, I made Liz Phillips a character in MLB The Show. <laughs> yeah, his player's okay. He's not hitting super well, but he's... Uh, well, he's, he's gonna have to work on that. He's pitching really well, so maybe... He's pitching well? Interesting. Yeah, weird, Bo. <laughs> This is the first road trip that I'm alone with Bo. I think the day that he leaves is the hardest. Um, and then we just get into a rhythm, but I mean, it's, it's hard. The day that he came home from the hospital, Evan had to leave an hour later to go to San Diego. And that's a memory I'll always have. I'm so grateful he was there to bring him home from the hospital, but you know, there's a lot that is missed and I, I do feel for Evan in that sense but I mean FaceTime is such a wonderful thing we get to talk to him every day and and it's so sweet when he comes home and kind of reunites with his little buddy it's the best you want to call dad yeah let's do it hi there you guys are hi how's it going so good. Yeah? What's he doing? Want to see your baby? Yes. I know it. Hi, buddy. Hi, baby. You see your dad? Hi, Maybe buddy. your voice soothed him and he chilled. He looks great. Yeah, he's doing so good. He's, he's chilling. Heavy. I tried putting him in one of those kite baby newborns this morning. Mm -mm. Which one? Oh, the, like the onesie things? So tight. He's, he's still not that big. I just can't believe I he's growing out of stuff. <laughs> I know, I, I don't know, I guess, I mean, some people have babies this big from the get-go. He would, his due date was, what, four days ago? He would have been yeah, I know. large and in charge. It's an absolutely wild story. Bo decided to show up six and a half, seven weeks early, and um, neither of us were expecting it. We, we felt like Liz was on the bigger side of, of her pregnancy, but you know, our doctors hadn't you know, give us any kind of feeling that he was gonna be early. I was so tired that day and I was in bed at like eight that night. Um, I was actually just like eating popcorn in bed and was just gonna like watch a movie or something and my water broke and I had absolutely no idea what was happening or what to really do. The team plane was about 15 minutes away from landing in Chicago. I had been texting Evan and I just said to Evan, I said, get on a plane. I gave birth at 11.33 p.m. on Thursday night, and then Bo went to the NICU that night. Evan went up with him when he got admitted up there and everything. I have this video of Evan just looking at Bo when he was getting all of his tests done in the beginning, and it's just, he has this special gaze when he looks at him that's just different than anything I've ever seen. Thankfully, his stint in the NICU wasn't, um, you know, wasn't based on his health or anything. He just needed time. Uh, so they had him, you know, closely monitored with different, you know, devices and everything to make sure he was progressing the right way. You know, seeing all those wires and things and monitors attached to him, uh, it was really hard. I think for the first few days it was just go mode because you're just trying to survive it and it was almost like we didn't have time to slow down and think about it until we did. And so for me that kind of meant until Evan left. There was just this one day when Evan was in Pittsburgh and he had just finished pitching and he did well and I was leaving that night and I just cried in that parking lot. It just felt so stale and I left the baby in the hospital and I had to drive 40 minutes home and I didn't have Evan there with me. 
And that was just a moment of, I think everything just at once kind of hit me. And it was, it was that feeling of, I can't bring my baby with me and I have to do this to see my baby. And then I sort of reframed it and realized he's exactly where he needs to be to get him home. Okay, buddy, we're gonna read our first book, okay? The first book he read to him in the NICU was Brown Bear and he still reads him that book. <laughs> Every day that went by was another stepping stone for Bo. I think about after a week, he came off his oxygen support. His lungs had grown uh, to a point where he could you know, breathe on his own. And at that point, it was just about being able to eat and um, you know, sleep better and breathe better and, and, and kind of improve that he could do that over the, the course of a few days. Every time a wire or a tube was removed, you felt like, wow, we're seeing our baby. I get to see who he is, we're gonna get closer and closer to bringing him home. And then finally, when they removed both of the tubes from his nose and we could see his whole face, that was, that was the most special feeling in the whole world. It gives you this new perspective of things that you can appreciate and enjoy, um, things that seem so simple, but seeing your babies, both of his cheeks together for the first time. When he was in the NICU in the hospital, one of the like measurements that they go off of of when he can go home is taking a certain amount of bottle on his own. And it's funny now, it's like, no problem, right? But before, it took a lot of work. Still does. Still does. So he was there for 15 days, which felt like an eternity, but in the grand scheme of things, he got out pretty quickly. You know, when it comes to baseball, it's really hard to time up, you know, when your son's gonna come home from the hospital. Fortunately, we were playing in San Diego and um, I was able to bring Bo home from the hospital with Liz that Friday before our game. It's not bad. Are you going home? Yeah. Yeah. It was so special. My mom had balloons outside. We were, we made a whole big day of it, didn't we? We sure did. Buddy. Oh, where are we going? Dad? We're gonna go on our first walk, buddy. Whoa. Look at me. You in those eyes. Oh. Watching Evan with him is just absolutely the best. And I don't know, I mean, he looks so little and so sweet with Evan, but watching Evan, I think that's one of like the most fulfilling things in the world for me. Did you brush his hair this morning? Of course I did. <laughs> See a little come over. He looks he looks so good. Thanks, Dad. Hi, right, buddy. Thanks, Dad. He's all I all I think about. And I think um, yeah, I've mentioned it a few times, but I take a lot of I, I get a lot of excitement knowing that I'm gonna be a dad far much longer than I'm gonna be a baseball player. Oh, look at his eyes. Hi, Bo. Is he looking at the screen? I'm I gonna think he pretend is. like he is. I know. Hi, buddy. I mean, I, I really do feel like he looks in the direction of your voice. It takes over your life, but it's it's the best thing that could ever happen to anybody. And to have a wife you know, like Liz, um, I feel so fortunate. There will be hard days. There's always going to be hard times. But I think the more we can just dive into each other's feelings and have that support for each other, I know we're going to end up fine. I love you guys. We love you, too. I said bye, Bo. Say love bye, you, buddy. Daddy. I'm Kiss Attack. Backstage Dodgers is brought to you by Cadillac. Buenos dias, Anita. Buenos dias. Unos pepinos para una ensalada. Unos sábanos. Eh, si me puede dar esos jitomates rojos, por favor. Mi nombre es Cristina Martínez, soy mexicana, emigrante, eh, dueña de South Philly Barbacoa y Casa México. Tenemos un grupo ahorita de futbolistas. Eh, ¿Cuáles son de esas? Estas está bien buenas. Este, vienen a visitarnos de Los Ángeles, entonces ahorita vamos a dar de almorzar. Oh, okay. Dicen, vamos a comprar y yo, pues vamos, okay. vamos a comprar. Ay, 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 ay.
Ya, ya están aquí, creo. Esto sí. Hola, hola, buenos días. Buenas, ¿cómo están? ¿Cómo estás? Con hambre. ¿Con hambre? Ok. <ríe> Bienvenidos. Gracias, gracias. ¿Cómo está usted? Cristina. David. Bienvenido. Víctor. Pues déme un abrazo porque yo no, yo no he visto a los hijos, y <ríe> los hermanos Hola, y los madre. tíos. Bienvenidos. Pues, gracias, muchas gracias. Bueno, dijo que tenía hambre, pero mm. vamos a ir a a moler un poquito de nixtamal para hacer nuestras tortillas. Ay, Dios mío, dele, pues. Sí, vamos. Vamos a ver. Cristina Martinez opened South Philly Barbacoa about eight years ago. She is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico, and her restaurant, in addition to just being like a wonderful place to eat and hang out, has become a real center for immigration rights and immigration issues in Philly and also nationally. She cooks basically exclusively lamb barbacoa. Christina's family actually back home is famous for its barbacoa. It's a hugely complicated process that takes days. It's marinated and then it's roasted slowly and uh, it's taken out and she cuts it down on house-made tortillas. She does it probably better than anybody else in Philadelphia right now. Aprendí a hacer la barbacoa viendo a mis padres, eh, principalmente haciendo la matanza de los borregos, que es un sacrificio que tiene que ser con mucha calma. Eh, con mucha fuerza y también con mucho, con mucho amor y mucha compasión. Eh, el menú es pequeño, es un concepto muy sencillo, pero de muy del corazón y con mucho sazón de esperanza, de amor y de, de fortuna. Vamos a poner este así. ¿De un solo lado o le doy vuelta? No, le de un solo lado. No, pero sí sabe. No, pues no más hacerla así, yo creo. ¿Lo está haciendo bien o no lo está haciendo bien? Muy bien, ya se hizo su tortilla. ¿Tú, Va a tener los brazos fuertes, mira. Va a tener los brazos fuertes. Brazos. Sí. Sí. Dale que ahí va, dale que va bien. Ya ahí va, ya ahí va, ya ahí va. Sí, me casé a los 17 años. Eh, estuve por 18 años en un matrimonio eh, muy difícil, complejo. Uno de los motivos de los cuales yo tuve que salir de México fue por el, el abuso, la explotación, eh, la agresión física, verbal, psicológica. Y tuve cuatro hijos, José, Carla, Isaías y Jesús, y posteriormente, pues, me divorcié. She left her kids behind and ended up in Philadelphia, and the barbacoa was kind of a way that she found that she could create community around something that she had grown up eating. Bueno, el viaje a los Estados Unidos ha sido, fue un impacto para mi vida muy grande porque pues yo tenía muchos deseos de, de trabajar, de superarme, de generar eh, dinero para mi familia, para tenerla reunificada un día. Eh, conocí a mi esposo, me casé, eh, trabajamos juntos, crecimos barbacoa. When she got, got here to Philadelphia, she was working as a re, in a restaurant, in a bakery. When her boss found out that she was undocumented, she was fired and then she and her husband were creating barbacoa in their apartment. Got a great reception from customers. Uh, they set up a food truck. They were doing really well. And then they moved into a brick and mortar restaurant and now two restaurants. ¿Estás cansado? Más o menos. ¿Cómo lo hacían para hacer todo el día esto? Pues, y eso es un poquitico lo que tú estás haciendo. Imagínate, la gente de antes hacía que bastante, mucho más. Ya, okay. 
Las manos, güey, aquí te eh, canso. No, menos mal no, que yo no, no, yo no. Sí, le de, va a tocar. Después no voy a poder jugar yo. No, no, no. She's partnered with chefs from Puerto Rico, from cities all over the United States, brought them to Philly to do these really amazing kind of one-off dinners. She works with the People's Kitchen to provide these free meals. And I think she's also just become kind of like a center point for people in the community. Yo creo que a mí me quedó mejor que a ti. Yo tengo no. mejor. Claro, mira. La estás haciendo con... Un desastre lo que estoy haciendo yo aquí. No. No, no. está bien. Bueno, ¿Ya te pues, cansaste? ¿Más pues rápido tenemos... que yo te cansaste? Sí, pues ya lo dejamos. Si no, ya. no, no, no. No, pero yo te, ya no puedo abrir la mano ya. I think Cristina's story is really inspiring because it just is a reminder that there is possibility in this country. It's powerful to see the way that the city of Philadelphia has, has banded around her and been so, so proud. ¿Cómo ayuda a la gente? Es dando oportunidad de que puedan trabajar, eh, enseñarles, educarles, eh, porque hay gente que llega como yo, solamente con una mochila de ilusiones, eh, tocando puertas sin saber el idioma, sin en cambio si abrimos esa puerta, pues damos oportunidad a que la gente no, no tome otras uh, decisiones de, de vida tan diferentes. Ahora sí. No, la está puesto primero. Y luego el pachuras un poquito. Ah, abro. Entonces, la vuelta o con todo lado, toda la bolsa. Con calma, con calma. Ay, dijimos eh. que la calma, este es el trabajo. No, ah. tiene razón, me lo saqué con calma y se me dañó. Ah. Ok, vamos otra vez. Ese es muy buen trabajo. Ah, o, o sea, yo estoy haciendo la tortilla. Dele, 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 que está bueno, está bueno. No, sí, no, es no, como no, los no, niños no, que ya no, quieren comer y la mamá tiene que apurarse, porque ya es la hora de la comida. Está bueno, está bueno. La primera prueba. Toca mío. Pero esto ya está. Sí, wow. mm. A ver. Si usted quiere, cuando las chicas necesitan descanso, que no, para darle un día libre, yo le vengo a trabajar, que hicimos buen trabajo. Hicimos buen trabajo. Christina won the James Beard Award in 2022 for Best Chef Mid-Atlantic. And you have to realize that the James Beard Foundation, which is, it's sort of like the Oscars of the food world. Buenas noches a todos. Para mí es un honor recibir esta medalla, recordando a todos los trabajadores inmigrantes en la industria restaurantera. By winning this award, she was showing off not only as a chef for her culinary side, but she was also a leader, and that's really what a chef is. It's a leader, somebody who can get a crew behind them and to serve the community. Estar aquí representando a Filadelfia a Mexi como mexicana y como emigrante. Gracias por esto a la Fundación. It's so hard to run a restaurant in the best of circumstances. The fact that Christina has done it really on her own terms out of these really unlikely circumstances is really hard to even wrap your mind around. And the fact that she's kind of stayed true to her own values and made it just a vessel for her to do the work that she cares about the most. You cannot overestimate how special South Philly Barbaco is. Salud. Salud, salud. Salud, salud. Pues muchas gracias. gracias. No, gracias a usted. Espero gracias. Que, que hayan disfrutado un poquito del... No, del... eso me pareció muy, 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 muy... She's an inspiration for everyone, especially, uh, well, Latin people that would come to this country to, to have a, the, the American dream, and that's where she's, she came from nothing, and she put a lot of hard work, dedication, discipline, and giving up his, her, her family was back in, in Mexico, and now she, she's like, have this successful like restaurant and you start appreciating a little bit more of what people go through to come here. ¿Y, cu ¿Y usted tiene cuánto, cuánto tiempo tiene usted aquí? Cu 14 años que no miraba a mi hijo. Mi hijo tiene 32, entonces el, el que murió aquí tenía 23. 
otro está en Tijuana, Carla vive en Michoacán, Jesús está en Tijuana también, pero no hemos tenido mucho contacto. ¿Qué es lo que sigue para ustedes? Lo que sigue... ¿Cuál es su meta? ¿La meta? Su meta, su proyecto. Nos vamos en las ligas mayores y la meta es seguir jugando en las ligas mayores. Yo, yo, este, yo tengo, estoy casado, tengo dos niñas y es seguir con mi familia y seguir la misma tradición que tengo con mi familia para, para guiar y llevar a mis hijas en un buen camino. Porque ya las metas que, que me he trazado en la parte de mi trabajo de deporte, poco a poco las he logrado y tengo que seguir trabajando para eso. Y entonces esa es la, la, la manera. Bueno, a mí se me ha hecho difícil el béisbol. Él ya tiene muchos más años jugando esta liga. Yo apenas tengo dos, tres años. Entonces igual la meta mía es seguir aquí, mantenerme con, con salud para poder ayudar a, a mi familia, a mi esposa, a, a mis hijos, y entonces a mis abuelos, a, todo, a toda la familia que tengo allá en México, poderlas ayudar y mantenerme aquí jugando grandes ligas, pues entonces la meta para mí es mantenerme con salud para poder jugar muchos años. Importante llevar el mensaje, ¿no? Que, que contiene la libertad de poder viajar y disfrutar. Disfruten su vida, disfruten claro. su tiempo, disfruten as, como compañeros a su jefe, porque cuando se va una persona y se va para siempre es creo que lo más difícil, ¿no? No estamos listos para perder a alguien. No. Tiene una historia pues, muy bonita, yo creo, como todos los mexicanos que se vienen acá a Estados Unidos a, 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 a querer cumplir un sueño. Yo creo que ella lo ha cumplido poco a poco. Fue muy bonita la, la historia que, que nos contó ella. Entonces, me llevó una experiencia muy bonita de poderla haberla conocido, escuchar sus palabras, cómo, cómo empezó. Entonces, fue algo extraordinario poder co conocerla. De verdad, un placer. Muchas gracias por todo, por, por todo ese cariño, por todo. No, pues gracias. Todo y hay, hay, hay que darle. Un placer. No, gracias. Para mí es importante hablar de mi historia, porque con la mía cuento las de miles de migrantes que están en Estados Unidos, miles de gentes que no se cuentan las historias, que están ahí guardadas, que no se abren. El hecho de que sea yo una mujer pública me da el poder de poderme sentirme libre, que si yo lo puedo hacer, alguien más puede hacerlo. Eh, no soy una mujer especial. Todos somos especiales en Estados Unidos. Todos tenemos una oportunidad y las oportunidades que sean que este país nos ha dado. On the next Backstage Dodgers. An off day spent on the links. That's so bad, but I hit an air.